Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about linking paths with expressions. All right, so this is what I mean by a linked path. This line is actually drawn with a bunch of different paths, but it's animated as if it's just one. They're drawn with Saber, and they're just masks that aren't closed. There's a duplicate copy down here, and all of this stuff right here is compound blurred, so it looks like it's a pretty cool reflection. So for each layer that we have set up on here, we have a mask, and our layer is named like 01, 02, and that determines the order in which these link up. All we're animating though is the start and end offset inside of Saber. And if you're not aware, that's a free plugin from Video Copilot. I'll link that down below. So I'm just gonna show you one of these expressions because start and end are basically the same thing. And they're all tied to this controller layer where you can see we have a slider for end and start and also a slider for the number of elements. In this case, it's set to five because we have five different paths to link up. Even though we technically have 10 because of the reflection, we're just worried about how the five link up together. So you can have multiple copies of these if you wanted to. All right, so let me drag over an expressionist window. I'll put these up on our site so you can copy and paste them if you want. That's also linked down below. Okay, so in this one, we're grabbing the end slider and setting that to a variable called end. And then we're gonna set up a variable called block. And to that, we're gonna take 100 and we're gonna divide the slider of the number of elements. So that basically lets us know that if we have five elements here, our block is 20. So every 20%, our strokes will fill up their entire length. So in our next line, we set up a variable called this num, and we're gonna set that equal to this layer dot name dot substring one comma two. Normally this would be zero comma two, but for some reason, After Effects strings start with one. So then we're gonna set up a variable for our range start. I'm gonna call that r start, and we're gonna set that to this num minus one, put that in parentheses because that's important, times block. So say we're on the first one, that's 01. That'll be 01 minus one, so that's zero times block. So that'll be zero. And then our range end variable is gonna be set to the number of this layer. So in this case, it would be one times the block. So that'd be 20. So this particular block will be zero to 20. If this was layer two, it would be one times 20 and two times 20. So it'd be from 20 to 40. Then we're gonna do linear as our end slider goes from the range start to the range end. This particular stroke will go from zero to 100. That's basically it for the whole setup of this. The only time you might run into an issue is if you're doing a more complicated one, kind of like this one, where you're drawing your paths and the next one's pretty complicated, so you want to keep the same angle. So then you're just duplicating that path and moving the other points around. In cases like that, all your strokes are going to go the same direction, which means instead of continuing on, one stroke will draw in and the next one will come in backwards. So to fix that, all you really have to do is reverse these last two numbers. There's also another way you can do that with an absolute value, but this is the simpler way to do it. Start is done basically the same way. So let's move this out of the way. So now you can see how that animates. One thing I think is that this is holding a little too long. So if I want to change this around, it's really easy. And this is why I developed this to begin with. If I drag these out now, we'll have different motion. It takes a little bit to render because I'm using a bunch of layers. It's got reflections and stuff like that. And I have to render it full because for some reason, at certain resolutions, you'll see a gap between your strokes. I don't know why that is, but they render correctly. So there we go. Now the motion of that's a little bit nicer. But let's say it's too long. I can go back and bring these in. I can bring this down a little bit more. And I can just start rendering it over again. And then we have a completely different animation. So that's pretty much how you do that. There's one other thing I'd like to show you. If you notice, I named this non-biased, and that's because all of these are going to move at the same rate. But you might run into a situation, especially if you have something like this one, where you can kind of see how the first one draws really quickly, and then it kind of slows down a lot. And you might want that effect, but chances are you want it all to animate as if it's completely one stroke going the same speed the whole way. So in order to fix that, I biased it. So if we bring Expressionist back in here and I open up one of these, you can see this one's a lot simpler and that's because we can only really easily do two. If you do any more than two with this, the way you'd have to set it up, you might as well just animate them all by hand. So our first variable here is just bias and we're setting that equal to the slider that we have in our controller. Then we're just grabbing an end and then we're just ending with a linear expression, pretty much the same way as before. This is on the first one, so we're gonna take our variable end. As it goes from zero to our bias point, this stroke will go from zero to 100. So as you can probably tell, bias controls where our layers switch from one to the other. Right now it's set to a value of 50, which is why the first part seems a little faster. That first stroke is probably about 80% of our entire line, so let's put in 80. So you can see if we render and play that back that it actually goes about the same speed now. Chances are, if you want these things to wrap around like that, you're not gonna be using like five different layers, so this will probably work for you. But if you need a bunch of them and you kinda want them to be about the same speed, try to make them all about the same size. I used this on a project a couple of weeks ago where I knew there'd be a lot of changes, 
and I didn't want to hand animate these things over and over again. So by setting it up this way, I actually could sit there with a the client and show them in real time basically how it would animate. It was a really helpful way to do this kind of effect, so I hope it'll help you guys out too. Anyway, that's it. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you guys next week. For real this time, we're, we're not going to another country for a while that doesn't have good internet. <laughs>